Hi and welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm doing something a little bit different and I am doing a vlog about getting to know me. Aren't you all in for a treat? Um, so I took to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to ask people to if there was anything they wanted to know about me and some people asked me some questions and today on my disability channel I'm going to answer them so that you can get to know me a little bit better. First question is from Tuesday the Alien uh, and she asked me a couple of questions. The first question she asked me was how did you meet your husband? I met Neil on Match.com. Um, we matched and got chatting and then we he was in Cornwall I was in Plymouth so it was about a two-hour drive he came up to Plymouth to meet me and we went out for dinner and he will tell you otherwise he'll deny this but the only reason he liked me so much on our first date was because my boobs were out and um, he will deny that though um, our first date was quite surreal really we had dinner and we went for a walk on the sort of the Hogue, um, which is the equivalent of our seafront, I guess. And I guess we just hit it off straight away and that was it really. Sort of 11, 12 years later, we're still together and we're married. So something about my boobs must have really worked that night. <laughs> this next question is also from Tuesday the Alien and she asked, what was the first non-natural colour you dyed your hair? Uh, the first time I ever had my hair coloured, um, it was from my mum's mobile hairdresser. She was my mobile hairdresser at the time as well. And it was red, bright red highlights. So I had one of those torture caps that they put on where they yank tiny bits of your hair through the holes in the plastic cap. And then she bleached those and then I had those bits dyed red. That was the first time I'd ever had my hair coloured. And it escalated from there, I guess. <laughs> um, I had sort of variations of red hair for quite a long time, um, up until I got married, really. Uh, it was quite red when I got married. Not like pillar box red, but sort of a deep, dark red. Um, and then after I got married, I cut all my hair off. And a year or so after that, I started dying in mad colours. And the third question is also from Tuesday the Alien. Thank you, by the way, for your questions. Much appreciated. She asked, what is your favourite book? Um, my favourite book, or my favourite, favourite, favourite book is The Valley of the Dogs by Jacqueline Suzanne. Um, I love it. It's my favourite. I will be reviewing it over on Astellasaurus Reads. At some point, I've read it so many times. Um, if you haven't already read it, it, you should. It's a cult classic. It's just one of those books you should read. It is, it is glorious. It's just the best book. So I highly recommend Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne. And the next question is from Rachel over on Facebook. And she asked, what is your favourite Disney film? And if you could be a Disney character for a day, who would you be and why? My favourite Disney film is either Hercules or The Princess and the Frog. They are two massively underrated Disney films. Uh, nobody talks about them. They Neither of them really get a big, especially Hercules, doesn't get a good, like a big hype around it, which is a shame because it is so funny. The songs in it are brilliant. Um, I love Hercules and I love The Princess and the Frog. They've got some classic proper Disney songs in them. Um, they're both just really good. If you haven't seen either of them, you totally, totally should. And if I could be a Disney character for a day, I think I would be my favourite Disney character. I would be Lotso um, because I would be pink and fluffy and I would smell of strawberries. And I would also be a little bit mean. And I'm most of those things anyway. Uh, thank you for your question, Rachel. The question is from the lovely Cass. This August who came from Facebook. Why are you so bloody awesome? Where does it come from? Um, well, I will say that my awesomeness comes from my mother and she totally did not tell me to say that. Um, I don't think I am awesome. 
Um, so I don't, I couldn't tell you where it comes from. I am the least awesome person in the world. Um, so I can't really help with that question. Um, it did make me laugh when she asked though. Um, so I guess my answer is my awesomeness comes from my mother. This question came from Natalie over on Instagram and she asked, are there any fashion styles slash trends that you'd love to try? Um, I kind of don't follow fashion trends or styles. I wear what fits me. I wear what I can get a good bargain on. Um, I love to go in Primark. I'm all for cheap and cheerful. Um, I've done outfit posts in the past on Instagram and on my blog um, where I've worn sort of outrageously colourful things. I like colourful things. I like fun things. I like nostalgic jumpers and t-shirts. Um, I do tend to search out that are sort of quirky and unusual things like I will show you my new cardigan. So it's not it's not new new, I've had it for a while. I just haven't worn it yet. I got it on ASOS in the sale and it's got golden green uh, tassels <laughs> all around it. So it's like a black cardigan on the top. So it's business on the top, party on the bottom. So I love anything like that really. Yeah, I don't sort of have a set style, just whatever's colorful, whatever catches my eye, uh, whatever I can get for a bargain. Um, with anything with Disney characters or ponies, My Little Pony. Um, anything really. I think I've got a lot of things with cats on. I've got a lot of rainbow things. Um, so I don't particularly follow a style at present. So something I would like to try is I want to be more confident about how I dress. And if you've watched things like The Mindy Project and My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, I really want to be able to dress like them. So the way Mindy dresses and sort of the bodycon stuff. And just really embracing curves, which is not something I do at the moment. I just sort of cover them up in big baggy Slytherin jumpers. Um, so I would like to try and embrace my size and my curves and dress. Be, look, be more like Mindy, I think. I would like to be more like Mindy. Uh, so thank you for that question. I was asked by Emma, uh, who is bookworm girl and she asked me this over on Instagram. She asked the best place I've ever been on holiday. Um, you can probably guess because I probably haven't stopped talking about it really since I went and I won't stop talking about it until I've been back from the holiday that I've got booked uh, in the next three months. But the best holiday I've ever had was to Florida last year. And um, it was so good that a couple of weeks after we got back, I booked another one, um, which will be going on in a couple of months. Um, it was my first time to Florida, it was my first time to Disney, it was my first long haul flight um, and it was an amazing holiday. Um, I watched my brother get married, um, it was just fantastic. Um, I suppose it's quite, it was a big holiday um, and when I think back in my life I have had some other sort of good holidays. Um, we had a lot of family holidays when I was a kid so when I was very little and I, I don't remember it but when I was very little we would go to Spain and things like that and um, when I was older and my brother was born we would go to Norfolk every year and we would go to Shrewsbury every year and I've had some lovely I've got some lovely memories of sort of those holidays and um, another holiday I thoroughly enjoyed was uh, it was like a family holiday and Neil came too we went to we went back to Norfolk for the first time in quite a few years and my brother was there as well and that was that was a really lovely holiday um i do i have a lot of fun memories of that holiday it was a really hot summer um it was just a really lovely holiday um but yes my best and favorite holiday was disney last year now asked me another question what was your dream job as a child um i still now don't know what my dream job would be i'm quite indecisive and when i was a child um what I wanted to be changed a lot. I never wanted to be, I knew I never wanted to be a nurse or a vet or a police officer. I did for quite some time want to be the person that put makeup on corpses for funerals um, because I'd watched My Girl and I wanted to be like Jamie Lee Curtis. 
um, for a long time I wanted to be a pathologist. I was fascinated, I still am fascinated by medical science and medicine and surgery and all things like that. Um, so I really fancied being a pathologist. Um, I wasn't the brightest, I certainly never would have got the grade and I wouldn't have had the motivation to go to university and follow that career, let's say. Um, but I was already, I was put off that career before I even really started or thought about it too much because my careers advisor told me that short disabled people could not be pathologists because they could not reach nor stand up to the table to dissect a body. Um, so that was the end of that dream, I guess. Um, I think I've always kind of wanted to do something creative like writing um, and now as an adult my dream job would be to be a writer, I'd like to write books, children's books, um, all sort of young, old, slightly older children's books, uh, that would be my dream job. But yeah, as a child, I don't think I really had a dream job. Got another question from Emma, she also asked how I met my husband, I'm, I'm not going to tell you again, and she asked, tell us about your wedding day. Um, my wedding day was lovely, um, I had a lovely day. Um, I was really stressed sort of leading up to it um, and I was really worried that people wouldn't have a good time or that people would find it boring or that people wouldn't dance. That was my biggest fear that people wouldn't dance at my wedding and I'd sort of, we'd prepped our wedding DJ beforehand to play stuff that people would dance to like the Time Warp and the Macarena and just things from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, things that people would get up and dance to um, and he did a brilliant job and people danced all night at my wedding and it was amazing and I was so happy that people danced and that really was genuinely my biggest fear about the day and um, I wasn't worried that Neil wouldn't turn up I was worried that people wouldn't dance and um, we got married in 2013 and by the magic of editing next will appear a wedding photo uh, so that was one of our wedding photos um, my dress is beautiful, I was, my dress was far too pretty for me and um, when I did the trial sort of trying it on and things when we bought it I cried in the changing rooms quite a lot because the dress was too beautiful and I was sort of tainting it by being in it but I loved my dress, it was big, it was just gorgeous, I loved my dress. Um, as you can see I looked a little bit different back in 2013. I didn't have that many tattoos, uh, which I think my mother much preferred. I personally think I look much better now covered in tattoos, but there you go. Um, yeah, our wedding was great. We had, a, our family was there, our friends were there. Um, the day went really smoothly, the venue was lovely, uh, the food was really good, the drinks, were really good, the DJ was really good, we had um, as sort of as favours we had candy apples in our wedding colours which were yellow and green and instead of a wedding cake we had cupcakes and I did, a I made my own sweet buffet so like penny sweets, gummy sweets, flying saucers, um, I made labels for everything, um, it was just, it was a lot of fun, we did a lot of it uh, sort of on the cheap, we did it as cheaply as we could. Um, my parents very kindly helped out, Neil's family very kindly helped out. Um, the sort of real expenses for the wedding were hair and makeup, which cost a fortune. Um, the wedding car, I sort of, I, I wanted a proper wedding car and we had vintage cars, which were just gorgeous. Um, yeah, it was fabulous. I will link down below um, a blog that I wrote a very long time ago about my wedding day um, and that's got some pictures and things in it uh, so I'll link that below and uh, so yeah that was my wedding day <laughs> um, I walked down the aisle to Etta James at last and our first dance song was Al Green's Let's Stay Together. <laughs> the next question was another question from Instagram and she asked how my little sphinx was getting on. So here is my little sphinx. Rocco is not quite as small as he once was and he is, I'm just going to show you, 
incredibly filthy today he's really dirty um he gets bathed once a week but i'm thinking i'm gonna have to start bathing him twice a week because he is a grubber um, i'm just gonna show you his nose if you'll hold still show me nose um his nose is supposed to be pink um i have to wash it regularly because his nose goes brown and um, he is filthy um Rocco is turning into somewhat of a pest. He is a bit of a terrorist. Um, he will steal food. He attacks the other cats. He jumps on people. He jumps in the bin all the time. He has weed all over my carpet. Um, he is not very nice at all. <laughs> Luckily, he's really cute and funny. So you forgive all those things. You forgive the dirty marks he leaves everywhere because he is super cute. Um, but yeah, he's getting on really well. Um, the other cats are starting to tolerate him a bit more. Our eldest B uh, is pretty tolerant of him until he starts jumping up and down on her like a small child. Um, and she doesn't really appreciate that so much. So we have a bit of a kerfuffle. Um, Mallory, our middle cat, and also our biggest cat, Mallory, is a tank. Um, she probably tolerates him the best because if he goes near her she gives him a look um so as soon as she as soon as he gets the look he will stop dead in his tracks and cease aggravating her um figaro my baby is the one we've had the most problem with figaro doesn't really like him at all does not tolerate him hisses at him whenever he walks past um which has been a bit of a struggle but just recently Figaro has started to come back onto the bed at night so Rocco since the day we got him Rocco has slept in the bed under the covers with me every night um, and Figaro has sort of largely stayed away from the bed and me during this time but in the last couple of weeks I've noticed Figaro has started to come back onto the bed and has started coming for his morning cuddle where he gets sort of in the crook of my arm when I'm lay down and um, so that's been really nice to see um, I think I'm hopeful that things will progress with them all and that they'll start to get on even more than they already do so. But it is fine. Um, they don't fight so much that I would worry about it. Um, Rocco does end up with sort of scratches on his face, but because he has no fur to protect him, the scratches look more prominent. So it's not really anything I'm overly worried about. So yes, thank you. Rocco is getting on really well. The next question is from Stacey. She asked, what do you like to do for downtime? Um, a bit of everything really. I'm a bit of a sod for starting hobbies and never finishing them or starting projects and never finishing them. So usually when I've got downtime, I will start a colouring project or I'll start a knitting project or I'll start playing a game and then I'll just get bored after a little while and stop and never pick that thing up again or I'll start a craft project of some kind, I'll get really into it and then I'll pick it up one day and just be like my god this is so rubbish, this is horrible, why am I so terrible at this and I will throw it out completely and not think about that sort of particular craft or project ever again. Um, so I suppose for downtime I do a lot of reading, um, I watch a lot of TV, I record terrible programmes on the television, terrible procedural cop dramas that are just awful but I love to watch them. Um, so I sort of record those and watch those. Um, a lot of the time my downtime is just me being completely exhausted um, from anything I have already done. Um, at weekends and the days that I'm not working. Um, once a month I have my nails done. Uh, I really love my nails at the moment. I had them done the other week and they are rainbows. Amazing. Um, I get my hair done once a month. I'm actually having my hair done tomorrow, thankfully, because it's horrible at the moment. Um, I'm sort of a week or so behind because I had to cancel my last appointment because I wasn't very well. Um, but yeah, uh, so in my downtime I sort of do whatever really it depends how I'm feeling on that particular day um in my downtime today I might play a little bit for Animal Crossing I've picked that back up on the DS uh ready for the new one that is coming out in March that I've pre-ordered um so I'm sure once that arrives my downtime will be very much consumed with Animal Crossing 
Thank you for the question, Stacey. Stacey asked me another question. Uh, she asked, do I have any gorgeous friends that I met through blogging? Hmm, do I? Yes, I do. Stacey, funnily enough, is a gorgeous friend I have met through blogging. Um, Stacey and I have become really good friends and I'm always surprised on time hop every day how long we've been friends for now. Um, we've met physically three times now. Um, I wish she lived closer so that I could see her more often, we'll keep in touch. Um, I feel like I've been a bit rubbish lately at keeping in touch with her. I feel like I've been a bit rubbish at keeping in touch with everyone. Um, but we chat at least once a week, sometimes once a day. Um, but yeah, at least once a week we'll talk to each other. And she's so supportive, she's offered me so much advice. Um, yeah, I love her, she's gorgeous. Um, thank you for your questions, Daisy. Um, the next question I asked was by Monster for Mama over on Instagram, and she asked, what inspires you to keep going? Um, this is a really tough one because I do have days where I do not want to keep going at all, and not that I want to particularly bring a downer on this video, but lately I've been in a bit of a slump, um, my health is not going so well at the moment, um, I'm plagued by chronic UTIs, I am plagued by chronic migraines and headaches, um, I've got eczema on my face that is sort of really getting me down, um, I'm overweight, I'm in pain um, and it's been really difficult to get up each day and keep going. So on days like that what inspires me to keep going? Um, stubbornness I would say stubbornness is what inspires me I am too stubborn to give in and lay down and die <laughs> um, so I keep going because I want to spite everyone and spite the world and keep going despite all of that so I would say it's probably not a very good answer and it's certainly not a motivational or positive answer but I would say definitely stubbornness is what inspires me to keep going and so thank you for that question. The next question is from Sarah who is Rain Monkey over on Instagram. She has a lovely blog by the way that you should definitely check out. Um, I love Sarah to pieces, she's such a lovely lovely person. Um, and anyone you ask, anyone that knows her will also agree with me and say that she is just such a lovely person. And um, I will link it below, but you should definitely, definitely, definitely check out her toy photography because it is amazing. Um, anyway, what Sarah asked me was, what's your favourite fantasy world? My favourite fantasy world, I would say, is a toss-up between Terry Pratchett's Discworld and uh, Lyra's Oxford, so Lyra from the Northern Lights series, the Philip Pullman books. Uh, I love the idea that everybody has a demon. Um, so sort of, if you've read the book, you'll know what that is, like an animal part of you that ex coexists with you. Um, and I've, I've always loved that idea. Um, so yeah, maybe Lyra's Oxford or Terry Pratchett's, Terry Pratchett's Discworld, I think would be my ideal fantasy worlds to live in. Uh, Sarah asked me another question. She asked me, what's your favourite flower? Uh, my favourite flower is peonies, I think. Um, I love a peony. Absolutely love them. I think they're, so, they're big, they're fat, they're pink. Um, they're just gorgeous. I love peonies there. And they're in season for such a short time, um, which is a real shame. Um, the cat is calling me. Sarah Rain Monkey also asked me what was your favourite toy when you were a kid. Um, I was talking to my mum about this last night because I honestly don't know what my favourite toy was. Um, the one thing I've had with me since I was a child and still have now and still have every day was Blanket. Uh, blanket is a blanket. Um, over the years Blanket has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, there's not a huge amount of blanket left now considering how big it started and it also used to sort of have these little pastel coloured dots all over it and all of the pastel coloured dots have faded off 
Um, it is, the bl blanket is as old as I am. And I think it might have been secondhand to start with. Um, so God knows how old blanket is. But blanket has been my companion throughout my entire life and blanket will always be my companion. Um, I don't know if that counts as a toy. I don't know. Um, but that's what I'm going to say anyway, that my favourite toy as a child was Blanket because Blanket went everywhere with me and did everything with me. <laughs> uh, so Rain Monkey Sarah asked what my next knitting project is and through the magic of editing. My next knitting project is a lap blanket. So it's sort of this dark limey green colour and um, it's really chunky wool I'm using really chunky knitting needles they're a size 20 they're huge they're quite difficult to knit with and um, but it's just going to be like a little blanket that I can pop over my legs when I'm sat on the chair and I'm a bit chilly um, so yeah that's my next knitting project I'm probably a third of the way through it um, I was really into it a couple of weeks ago I've sort of slacked off a bit now I'm it down and haven't picked it up since um, but I will finish it soon <laughs> that's it that's all the questions I was asked um I hope that gave you a little bit more insight into me um if you've got any other questions anything else you'd like to know then drop me a message below I'd love to hear from you don't forget to like and subscribe I feel like I deserve more subscribers than I've got so I would absolutely love for you to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Um, I will pop all the relevant links below uh, so you can read all about my wedding and I will pop a link to my Instagram so you can see some of the wacky clothes that I wear and I post pictures of Rocco on there so you can keep up to date with Rocco's progress uh, and don't worry I only post pictures of him when he's clean. Um, so that was it. Uh, thank you to everyone that asked me a question. Um, I had fun answering them. Um, something a little bit different on my disability channel. Um, I will be back soon with another disability related video. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.